Hello and welcome to another edition of If This Car Could Talk. It's Thursday, which means it's part two of the 1978 F100 story. So let's get to it. The F-Series truck line is without a doubt the single most popular and well-known product to ever come out of any Ford factory since the first F-designated light-duty pickup truck debuted in 1948. They have become ingrained in American culture, just like baseball and jazz. After 1952, the F-Series trucks, which were originally designated as F1, F2, and F3, would now be known as F100, F250, and F350. This coincided with Ford's 50th anniversary in 1953. In 1957, the F-Series took on a much different look than their immediate predecessors, being much more angular in appearance. In 1961, Ford again completely restyled their light-duty truck line to look very contemporary and modern. 1965 would be the first year for the innovative front suspension known as the twin I-Beam. This ingenious design was used for decades on millions of Ford batch trucks, seeing their last one used in 1984 on F-100 two-wheel drives 1996 for F-150 two-wheel drives, and 2016 for F-250 and 350 two-wheel drives. The next design phase was used for six years, from 1967 until the end of the 1972 model year. Trucks were becoming more mainstream, now often being used for other tasks other than work. Creature comforts like power brakes, power steering, air conditioning, and more were becoming more common each year. When the 1973 models were debuted, truck fans everywhere rejoiced in the yearly improvements Ford engineered and incorporated into their pickup offerings. Beginning in 1973, on all F100 two-wheel drives, manual front disc brakes were standard equipment and power assists were optional. All 1975 through 79 F100s and F150 two-wheel drives came standard with power front disc brakes. Some 1973-79 F250 two-wheel drives have single piston caliper front disc brakes as it depends on the F250's GVW. The other F250 two-wheel drives and all F350's have dual piston caliper front disc brakes. During this time, truck buyers were demanding more choices for body styles, drive trains and other standard or at least optional equipment availability. The first super cab body style was offered in 1974. It was essentially a 22 inch extension for the cab with either a forward facing rear bench seat or two smaller jump seats. The following year Ford offered up the new F-150. It was a model essentially created to help avoid certain emission regulations for drivetrain requirements in lighter duty pickup trucks. In 1976 would be the first year that power front disc brakes would be available on all F100, 150, and 250 four-wheel drives as standard equipment. This would also be the final year for the tried and true but difficult to tune for emissions Ford FE 360 and 390 engines. This was also the first year that Ford would officially declare that the F-Series is America's top selling model and every year since then they've made that claim. The big block FE would be replaced by the emissions legal 351M and 400 V8s in 1977. This would also be the first year for the new ubiquitous F350 dual rear wheel or dually still offered alongside their single rear wheel drive equipped brethren, which first came on the scene in 1973 when the 6th gen trucks hit Ford showrooms all over the country. When the 1978 model year selling season came around in the fall of 77, Ford was touting a newly designed Bronco, which was now based on the F-Series chassis. Unlike their F-Series counterparts, they were only offered with a 351M or 400 cubic inch V8. However, the really big news at Ford in 1978 was the 75th anniversary observance that was commemorated by making available a Diamond Jubilee Ford Thunderbird and Lincoln Mark V. Curiously, Ford opted not to have a Mercury or F-Series offering for this momentous occasion. What better time than 1978 for Ford to up their game than by making innovations such as the new top-of-the-line Ranger Lariat model, optioning tilt steering and lighted vanity mirrors in the F-Trucks and Broncos. The Super Cab and four-wheel drive editions of the F-Series are now standard with a 351M cubic inch engine, 
Four-wheel drive is now available on the Super Cab trucks, Custom, and Ranger XLT models are no longer available in the Crew Cab body. The Camper Specials were still known as Camper Special for correctly optioned F-250s and the new Super Camper Special for certain F-350 single rear-wheel drive trucks. It's also the first year for the four-speed manual overdrive transmission, a new AM radio with a digital display and clock, the first factory installed CB radio, and the popular free wheeling package, first seen in 1977, exclusively on the flare side trucks, is now optional on style side bodies as well. Additionally, there are A and B packages for the sporty options. Standard features for the style side included colorful rainbow body side tape striping, a unique interior, a blackout grill, and a black front bumper. Add the B package and you'll add a black GT bar, five macho painted style steel wheels in your choice of white or yellow, and a spare tire lock. These options were also available separately if a buyer only wanted a few of these features. The Bronco also had a version of this macho looking appearance package. Enthusiasts of these beautifully designed classic trucks may notice that some of the models from the last two years of the sixth generation have square headlamps, like our featured truck does. In 1978, only custom series trucks and Broncos used round headlamps. The Ranger, Ranger XLT, and Ranger Lariat all had square lamps, and all 79s went with the square fig configuration. After 1978, Ford discontinued the F100 four-wheel drive trucks. The F100 designation would last through 1984. Ford continues to innovate their truck offerings just like they always have. This newest generation, officially their 13th, continues to break sales records. Whether someone buying a 2020 model and keeping it the same family for 42 years and counting may happen, it'll be a while before we see that. 2062, to be exact. I'd like to thank my new friends, John and Candace, the owners of this week's feature truck, for taking the time to show all of my YouTube friends their Survivor 78 Ford F100. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that free subscribe button so you'll never miss our two weekly videos. I also welcome your comments. Hey, don't forget to tune in again on Sunday. You're going to love what we have for you. A 1955 Plymouth Savoy. Boy, is this a beauty. You bet you can't wait to see it. Check it out on Sunday. This is Dana, signing off. Have a great rest of your week. And be careful out there.